Hey guys, how's it going? It's Amanda. So today we're gonna take a look at my living room, gaming and TV setup. You guys got an overview of it here, but we are gonna take a look at all the little components that make it what it is. So the main star of the show here is my 65 inch LG OLED. This is the C7P, so it's not the newest one that came out just this year. But if you are looking for a value <laughs> high-end TV, this is definitely my suggestion, which is why I picked it. It is absolutely an amazing TV. Now, if you're new to OLED or you don't know a lot about it, you definitely have to take a little more care. You can't leave static images on your screen because it can get some burn in, but that is never an issue I have had. I am super careful with it and I make sure my screensaver is on to kind of protect it from that. Now speaking of the screensaver, it looks like my TV's almost off, but the screensaver is actually on right now. And that's because the pixels do not light up whenever there is nothing needed for color. So the black just stays black. And here's a quick sample I'm going to show you guys, just so you can see how crazy amazing the colors look on this. I don't want to get any copyrights, so I'm going to click off of this pretty quick, but just check that out. That looks absolutely amazing. Another amazing thing is look how thin this is. That's incredibly thin. In fact, it's way thinner than my iPhone is here, you can see. And how they do that is everything is all compartmentalized down at the bottom. So it's not gonna lay flat like a poster would on your wall. It does stick out a little bit, but it is still very thin and trim at the bottom as well. Included with this TV is a smart remote. And if you look at the screen, you can see it has like a cursor. So it's kind of like using a Wii controller. And one really cool thing I found is Logitech has this K600 keyboard and it has everything to control this TV built into a keyboard. So off to the right, there is like this little touchpad, and it works just like my controller did on the screen. It gives you that cursor and everything works great. If you're using a smart TV, you know you have to do a lot more clicking left and right to fill in your passwords and all that. And that really simplifies everything. Plus you just have an unlimited number of shows you can search for. And this just really makes it much easier than one letter click at a time. Also there's control features at the top. You got like play, pause, fast forward, your volume. You've got mouse button clicks over here, left and right. There's even some things like um, I has a built-in home button, so it pops up my functions. A couple of these don't have anything, but um, then also there's just a generalized search button. So they've really simplified everything using this TV, and I really like this keyboard combination with it. Another item I'm using to control all of my gear in this room is this remote from Neo. And just check that out. It has such a beautiful OLED display up here at the top. It really is an amazing looking remote. So here I'm going to show you an example. I have all my living room things set up here and I click my Apple TV. And if you've seen some of the Logitech Harmony remotes, it kind of performs similar. It's going to turn my TV on. It's going to select my input. It turns the Apple TV on and everything, all of that with one click. I have a few other things set up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and we will go to another one. I have another one here that is for my Sonos speakers and you can see it shows you like the little album covers at the top here so you get a visual impression of what's going on which is really nice and you can even access your folders and Spotify playlists and all that right here from this once you've got it all set up. So another one I have set up is for my Xbox. So. It says Xbox One X, I click it, it's gonna turn my TV on, it's gonna turn my Xbox on, and it's gonna select the Xbox input, uh, the HDMI that is connected, so everything is just ready to go again with one click, and I absolutely love having these smart remotes, and I really like this Neo remote as well. Well, I've got this going on. I'm gonna grab my remote and just show it to you guys. Uh, I've got a custom controller from Controller Chaos, and if I press the button up here to turn it on, I think you can see that blinking, which I'll show it to you a little bit better. But I chose a black and white setup with purple accents, and I think it looks absolutely amazing. This is the Xbox Elite controller, so it's definitely not one of their cheapest ones, but I think they really nailed it with everything. There is that glowing back button. All of this is completely customizable. On the back, I even added my name to it, just to show everyone in the house it's mine, keep your hands off. Off. No, but really, if we go ahead and hit this randomize button, there's a bunch of just preset ones that you can look through. You can go in and fine tune it and customize it. You can flip through the angles and see all different angles of everything that you're customizing. And this is Elite Controller, which is already generally a much more expensive controller. You can pick a controller for the PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, any of the different things that you have and customize it as much as you want or as little as you want. And they can get very expensive or you can kind of keep it more to a minimal price depending on how much you customize. But good job, Controller Chaos. This thing looks amazing.
My Xbox and all my other components are hidden away in this cabinet. I have the Xbox One X, um, the Apple TV 4K, the Harmony Hub for from Logitech, my uh, home Wi-Fi, which is Eero. I've got my NAS down there, um, the Brain for my Neo Remote, which is the smart remote I just showed you, um, and many different power cords, and it's all kind of a mess. So I personally am not team Xbox or team PlayStation. I love both consoles and I enjoy whatever is the newest, latest, greatest. I like checking them out and comparing them. However, I had the original PS4, not the Pro, and it crapped out on me and I just haven't replaced it. So for now, until something causes me to want the newest one, I'm just gonna play Xbox for now. So absolutely love gaming on consoles. I do some PC gaming, but I think I just like the relaxed atmosphere of just sitting in my living room more so than being at a desk since I work at my desk. Maybe that's why, but I do really love gaming. Far Cry 5 is one of my favorites right now still. I'm getting ready to pick up Red Dead Redemption 2. If you guys have already got it on launch day, let me know in the comments down below how you like it, but I had too many things going on with my family, so I'm gonna get that either today or tomorrow possibly. So let me know how it is guys since I've been missing out on it All the audio in my room is ran through the Sonos speaker systems I'm sure you guys have all heard of Sonos, but I have a pretty large <laughs> Speaker collection of theirs. I absolutely love them. I do have the sub which is on the left side No, those things don't rattle off the top I have neighbors on one side since I'm a townhouse So I don't get to turn it up all that often, but when they're gone, I definitely do and this is not the best placement, I understand this, but without wall mounting my TV, the speaker does block my TV's view a little bit. So I do have it on the floor and I also have rear speakers, um, the ones paired up behind me. Now, again, I know that's not the best speaker placement, but I checked it out in both and I can live with it. It sounds fine enough, so don't at me guys. I do have the Sonos ones which add airplay, but whenever you bind them to your play bar, you lose the airplay. So I have the Apple TV 4K in this room for all my streaming. And whenever you have uh, Apple TV, you now have airplay capabilities. So even though I lost it by pairing my Sonos ones to my play bar, um, I still have the ability to do it. So whenever you're on your phone, you can just open up the app. And I'm sure you guys know how to do all this where you can switch where your audio goes to. But here you can see the Apple TV and mine is labeled living room. I don't know why my bedroom one's not showing up, but for whatever reason, it's not right now. Maybe the kids have it unplugged. I have no idea. But then from there, you can see I can control the audio, switch the songs, and it's all going through my Apple TV onto my Sonos system. So that's a quick tip. If you have your Apple TV, it doesn't matter what speakers you're using, you now can airplay to it. Moving along, all the lighting in this space that you see is smart lighting. Now all the colored lights are from LifeX. So I have four bulbs that you see in this picture, which is the A19 bulbs. And then around the TV, I have their beam. Let's start off with this lamp here. I have this lamp set up um, where I can control all three lights individually, which is how we have three different colors there. It is turned down very dim so that it doesn't kill the exposure on this shot but I want you guys to know it does get very bright. Now I have this set up as a group, so also I can control all three lights at one time and pair them um, so that they match, or you can set it up and have like color flow going on where it controls all three lights separately and you can make it go really fast or really slow and you guys know how LifeX works, but as a group you can do different things as well and really fine tune how you control these. It's really up to you and your creativity and how much time you wanna spend doing it, but I think it looks really awesome. And then above the TV, I have the LifeX Beam. I've done a full dedicated video on this so you guys can check out. But again, the brightness is turned way down just to not kill the exposure, but you can see these get extremely bright. And since the video, they've dropped another $50. So check those out if you guys are interested. Moving along to the ceiling lights, they are recessed lights that are regular dimmable LED bulbs, but they are controlled via noon light switches. I've done a full video on that, check it out. But this is my bright room setting, which turns on every light in my living room and kitchen. And then I also have a dim setting. You can really customize these. And one feature that they've added since I did my video is now you can integrate your LifeX lights. And how that works is basically you pick a certain setting or room or uh, lighting feature and you pair your LifeX lights to it. So when you turn that switch on and off, it turns your LifeX lights on and off as well. Here's my wall shelf off to the right. You can see there's a LifeX light there. I got a turntable, um, that's a U-turn orbit. Again, most of these things all have videos on my channel. Above that, the speakers are the Audio Engine HD3s, amazing little speakers, 
check those out as well. And then underneath, you can see that black thing sticking out. That is my Eufy robot vacuum, and it's dusty on top because it is keeping my floor clean, but tucked away underneath this cabinet, it does get dusty, and I didn't think to dust it off, but just check it out, guys. It really is awesome for the price. I've had zero issues with mine so far. I've had it since Christmas of last year, so we're going on one year now, and it really simplifies keeping all that pet hair cleaned up. Hey, Mango, nice, awesome feature as I'm talking about pet hair and messes. That pretty much sums up my living room gaming TV setup. Uh, I do have some other smart integrations you can check out. I have a whole video dedicated to how I use Alexa in my living room. Maybe that'll give you guys some ideas or maybe show you some things you didn't know you could do with your Alexa in your living room. But that pretty much wraps it up guys. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.